When he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that men should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. This passage from the book of Revelations was near to the mind of many a Christian in the war-racked days of the late 800s. Christendom, as it had been under Rome, as it had been under Charles the Hammer, seemed doomed to suffocate on blood and smoke brought by its enemies from the four corners of the earth. The end times, it appeared, had come indeed. While once holding sway over almost all of the former lands of the Western Roman Empire, few holdouts of Catholicism remained in the year 892, when the German Catholic Hugo of Bern led a rebellion against the Sunni Amukid Empire. It was an ill-fated rebellion, as ill-fated as Catholicism found itself across the continent. On the shores of the Atlantic, the Norsemen of the pagan kingdom of Aquitaine ruled from Brittany to the Pyrenees, and beyond into Barcelona and Toulouse on the Mediterranean side. The aforementioned Amukids had conquered right into the Gallic heartland, from Provence to Dijon. The Slavic Muslim kingdom of Carinthia, stretching from Ivria south of the Alps to Croatia on the Adriatic coast, was their closest ally. In the east, the great pagan empire of the Saxons had washed like a tide over Germania, stretching from Scandinavia to Italy, and from the Elba to Ireland. Another Saxon kingdom, calling itself the Frankreich, dominated the Loire and Seine rivers, even conquering the great city of Paris in 882. The beleaguered kingdom of the Agilolfings, still proclaiming themselves kings of the Germans, had been reduced to a mere rump state in the regions of Champagne and Blois. Even the Frankish lords of Trier and Lothringen no longer recognized their authority. On the Isle of Britain, where the new Saxons did not hold sway, the Anglo-Saxons, who had invaded in much the same way centuries earlier, clung to power in a narrow corridor of Christendom from Wessex to Fife. The Christian Gaelic kings of the Scottish Isles and of Munster in the southwest of Ireland had also managed to ride out the tide of Armageddon thus far. Christianity was still the most widespread religion across Western and Central Europe, but treatment of the faithful varied greatly from place to place. While the Muslim conquerors were most often content to levy the jizya tax on those who refused conversion to their religion, as they had in Iberia, the pagans were not always so pragmatic. Many adopted an official stance of benign neglect, but clashes at the local level between pagans and Christian peasants resulted in significant strife and bloodshed. The Saxons, in particular, maintained a saga tradition of their mistreatment by the Franks, and were known to treat them harshly in turn. And without the overarching authority of the church, many who stayed Christian broke from the Catholic communion and turned to various heresies to make sense of this new, more trying world. In the middle of it all was Pope Nicolaus I, an aging man of a bold and dauntless aspect who sought only to see the lands of the faithful restored. In his desperation, he looked to the Byzantine emperor, Theophylactos, for aid. The Eastern Orthodox Church had staunchly adopted iconoclasm a century before, and saw the Catholics as idolaters who were likely being punished for their sins. But nonetheless, Theophylactos could not watch his fellow Christians suffer, and lands that had once by rights been Roman fall under the sway of the heathens. The great city of Constantinople had only been recovered a scant six years earlier, after nearly 80 years of foreign rule, and the Greeks were invigorated to take up the fight for their faith. Theophylactos sent some 10,000 men under his strategos, Photios the Bold, and they managed to reclaim land in eastern Italy from Salerno all the way to Ancona from occupying pagans. Most of the Christian population there was quick to accept the Eastern Church, having seen the Bishop of Rome fail to protect them from pillage and despoilation. This left the Pope none too pleased, as he had expected these lands to be returned. With the Eastern Emperor a mere march across the Apennines from Rome herself, some began to dream of a reunited Roman Empire in their lifetimes. For the Holy See and their loyal Italian allies in Foggia, however, a different destiny was soon to germinate in the hearts and minds of the faithful. And from the wild lands of Moravia, they could glimpse a star of hope as the Catholic Bohemian King Albrecht looked out on the vast and fertile lands of Pannonia, once belonging to his family and wished to rule them once again. A new era was about to dawn for the Christians of Europe. 
an era in which they would take up arms for the faith and, in the eyes of God and man, either prove their righteous mettle or fade into the footnotes of history.